Start with some uh, some easy ones. Who's uh, who's the best dunker on this team? Best dunker, uh, probably Malik. He got bounce. You know, Fox can jump too. I don't think Mike can really jump too. Actually, uh, EJ had a lot of bounce when he was here too, but you know, he's doing track now. But I, yeah, so probably out of those three, Malik, uh, Fox, and uh, Mike. Heard a, I heard a story about the first first pickup game Malik dunked on somebody. <laughs> I didn't realize we were tell, talking about that, but yeah, he. He really dunked. I'm not going to say who he dunked on. It was, Dylan Pulliam? Yeah. <laughs> Dylan. He dunked on Dylan really bad. It was bad. I was like, dang. He could really jump. That was crazy. So it, when, when, when that happens, you ever been dunked on like that? I've never been dunked on No? Like no. <laughs> You've been dunked on though, right? I mean, everybody gets dunked on. How do you, how do you on move on from one of those when you get posterized? Uh, I don't know how you move on from that. <laughs> like when I got dunked on, it was just like, I mean, if you get dunked on by a big man, it's kind of different than a guard. But. Uh, it's, I mean, it's just basketball. Everybody's getting dunked on. If you're not getting dunked on, it means you're not trying. You're not jumping with everybody. So, you know, I've, I've jumped with everybody who jumps with me. I'm going to jump with them right back. So, I'll probably get dunked on by the end of the year, too. So, I mean, we'll see. How, how many posters is Malik Monk going to create this year, you think? Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of crazy dunks. Uh, not even just for him, for the whole team. Like, a lot of people can jump. But Malik will definitely have somebody on the poster this year. How, how much fun is it to to when you now you've gotten here and all these guys are together, it seems like maybe one of the, if not the most athletic team, Calipari's had. Just to have all these athletes, these guys who can run and jump and and, and you know run the floor and play fast and mm-hmm. above the rim. I think it's gonna be crazy. Uh, you know, just even in pickup, you, know, you get a lot of breakouts and everything like that. And you know, like we said, people getting dunked on. That's not the only one that's happened. So. Uh, it's definitely going to be a fun year. I think the fans will definitely watch out for that. I think Malik's going to lead this team in scoring? Uh, I'm not sure who's going to lead the team in scoring, but he can definitely put the ball in the cup. He can uh, he can shoot a lot better. I didn't realize he can shoot so well. Like uh, He can really shoot, but then there's a bunch of other guys who can really score too, so uh, we'll see. How uh, Who's the best shot blocker on this team? Best right shot now? blocker? Uh, I think Wayne can block a lot of shots. He's really long, active. The uh, best lockdown defender. you got to get one stop. Who's the, who's the uh, guy? Probably Isaiah. Why? On the ball, just he's, he's tenacious. You know, he's really strong. He's all up in the, in the guards and everything. So, who's got the best non-basketball talent, and and what is it? Um, is Isaac play an instrument? I thought, mm-hmm. yeah. Piano I sings. Yeah. yeah. So, he, oh yeah, I knew he sings. Yeah. So probably I'll give it to Isaac. Okay. Um, Cal's talked a lot about Briscoe, sort of really welcoming that leadership role this year. Mm-hmm. That he, he's taken that on and, and run with it. How have you seen? that from him? Have you seen that happen? Uh, yeah, he's definitely you know, excited to the fact that he's a leader this year, and he's really just helped us, you know, even just little things, you know, pointing out, like, where to be on the court at certain times, and, like, with actions, like, who to set the screen on, and just off the court, too, just helping us out, like, even where to get the class and stuff. Like, I mean, he's just been a good leader in general. Can you sense that, you know, he's a guy that tested the NBA waters, that he came back from that process with, you know, motivated, driven to, to, to improve all the things that he got feedback on? Yeah, definitely. I think the thing people said was like, well, he, like people try to say he couldn't shoot, but he can. He can definitely came back shooting really well. And he's, I think he's shocked a lot of people this year with that. What would have been the, uh, how competitive have the open gyms and the uh, practice has been? It's been like nothing I've ever been a part of before. Uh, you know, everybody on the court, every time he plays, somebody else is the best player on the court. Like it's not like one or two people are dominating pickups. Like everybody out here can really play. And uh, everybody out here will be the best player on like a high school or AAU team or anything like that. And it was, really feels like a, like an all-star game, like every time, like everybody's going competitively. And so it's been really crazy, it's been really competitive. How about you, it looks like you've, I mean, I saw you in, uh, uh, you know, AAU circuits, so you at McDonald's All-American game, it already looks like you've put on some size, is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, that's been one of my biggest focuses this year, just getting with the gym with Coach Rob and uh, Coach Harris, and, uh, you know, just trying to put on weight. I think I've put on like 10 pounds since I've been here, so, or maybe more, but uh, just, you know, just trying to get stronger, trying to be more physical and everything. I think I've done a really good job with that. Just getting used to banging down low and, you know, finishing strong and all that stuff. Have you learned, you know, from this experience being together this long this summer that you can play with these guys, that you can uh, play at this level? Definitely. Uh, I mean, I already knew that coming in that I wasn't going to come in here and just you know, give up anything. And I, I came in here and I'm ready to fight and everything. I think I really found myself, you know, summer. And, uh, you know, just confidence is a big thing in basketball. So I think gaining that has really helped me. Where do you think you can help this team right now? Uh, I think it's in versatility and just uh, being able to fit into a lot of different roles whenever I'm needed. So, you know, just me personally, I just want to come in and, you know, whenever I can be on the court, I want to be on the court, you know, just whenever I can help the team in any area. And that's my biggest thing. So uh, I think I think definitely it's, it's that versatility. If I asked you to give me your life story in 30 seconds, how would you tell it? What would it sound like? Uh, a kid from Chapel Hill who uh, wanted to play in the NFL, got too tall, 
fell in love with basketball and uh, is trying to make his dreams come true. What, uh, what, what moments or things or people have sort of shaped you? What, what's, made, what's made you the guy that you are right now? Uh, I'll say my family, and my, my mom, my dad, even my little brother, they've always been there for me and they supported me in everything I do. And uh, they've always, they've never pushed me into any situation or anything like that, but they've always just supported me. And then I have really good people around me, like, even like my trainer, and, you know, Fred Cannon, who's my AAU coach and everything, they've always been supportive of me and helped me with anything I need. So just having people like that around you is, is, is really special. Seems like your parents are pretty deep thinkers, they, you know, big thinkers. Yeah. How, how much of that has sort of shaped you as well I mean, the way you see the world the way that you you know go about your your life and your business mm -hmm. my mom and my dad are both really educated and everything and they're they are uh, things are deep thinkers like, you know they, they take the time with things and they've, they've also you know, showed me a lot and uh I, that's why i said i never really rushed into things and uh they never pushed me into anything and they've allowed me to like kind of make my own decisions be my own man and everything so i've, I've appreciated that from them you know, I notice your mom, you know, I follow her on social media. She's obviously a very outspoken person, mm -hmm. a lot of social activism and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, what is it like to, to have a, a mom who's out there, you know, speaking up for things that I think mean, important issues like yeah, that? I think it, I think it's great. Everything she tweets, uh, you know, she's she's really educated, like I said. So anything she's tweeting on there, you can tell she's put a lot of thought into it and a lot of research into it. And so I really I really listen to her, anything she tells me and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I do my own research, like she said. She says, don't just listen to me, like, you know, go figure it out for yourself. So she's definitely helped me with stuff like that and uh, knowing what's going on right now. What has she told you about, uh, you know, your your potential impact as a, a high-profile athlete? I mean, have you guys talk, had those kind of conversations about, mm -hmm. you know, the platform that you're going to have um, as a visible person to, to speak up for things that are important? Definitely. I mean, you know, she's, she's definitely talked to me about just even on social media, just like, you know, knowing what I tweet and knowing how many people is reaching and everything like that. For, like, it, it's like I'm not just like a regular, you know, even a high school kid. Like, I just turned 18 years old, so you know, I, I sometimes I've, I'm like, oh, I'm just trying to have fun and trying to be a kid and everything. She's like, you're on, you're on a platform now. Like, like, I went from two to 20,000 followers in like, like six months just after committing. So, like, it's, it's really crazy. It's trying to get used to that and, uh, you know, just using my voice, you know, to speak up for things that matter. Is there anything that you're really passionate about that you want to sort of use this platform to speak up for? I mean, I would just go in support of uh, uh, working for everything you have, and uh, there's obviously there's a lot of stuff going on right now that uh, I'm not going to speak on right now. But uh, I think I think right now, it's just, uh, as any kid that wants you know be good in basketball or just in life, just to work for it and uh, believe in yourself. Will there come a time you think where you'll you'll be ready to like start using that platform and speaking out a little uh, more vocally? Maybe, maybe we'll see. Yeah. yeah. What do you think? Of, what do you think of what Colin Kaepernick did? You, you, uh, I can't really speak. Can you can, can you can you sort of imagine sort of I guess where he one where he's coming from and also just sort of the the stress of making a stand like that knowing it's going to be controversial. I mean I think I think I can see from both angles the people that are mad at him and his supporters too. You know just the uh, I'm not going like, to speak on it that much but you know, I can see from both people's angles. Awesome.